Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Monday Night Mike. I am your host, John Quinn, and we have a treat for you this Monday. He is the first ever inductee into the Sea Dogs Hall of Fame. He's the franchise leader in points, assists. If I listed off all his records, we wouldn't have time to get to questions with him. Without further ado, NHL superstar for the Florida Panthers, please welcome to the show, Jonathan Huberto. Jonathan, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> no problem. Thank you for joining us. Now, just as a, a quick note to people, Jonathan did have a couple of issues with Wi-Fi as we were kind of testing this all out, so he may freeze a few times. Uh, he's not just doing his best uh, mannequin impression during the show, but uh, if he does freeze, he's going to hold on, and uh, we'll get to the questions. Don't worry. So if you freeze, um, hold on, and uh, we'll try to get it back as quickly as possible. Uh, Jonathan, first question. Obviously, a lot going on in the world right now. Uh, where are you? Uh, how are you keeping safe? Uh, who are you with right now? Yeah, I'm back in uh, in Quebec, uh, Turban, and uh, in my condo, and uh, with my fiance. So uh, we're here with our, our two cats and uh, just uh, hanging out. I mean, obviously, you know, we'd rather be playing hockey in Florida, but you know, that's what it is. That's what uh, happened, and it helped to uh, goes first. So I think we were just here waiting for everything to to get back to normal. Now, I've been asking all of our guests this. Obviously, you're a professional athlete. How are you kind of keeping in shape without access to, you know, a, a personal trainer and a nutritionist and a, a full gym and everything else? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think it's, uh, you know, we try to stay stay in shape. We, we don't know when we're going to go back. So, uh, obviously, you know, I uh, have some machine in my condo. It's a little small, but, I mean, I, I'm doing uh, – You know, to to kind of train and uh, stay in shape. Fantastic. Now I want to go back, Open, and you're uh, you're freezing up there a little bit, but we'll uh, we'll work through it. I want to visit uh, all the way back. It's it's 2009, the, the QMJHL draft. Um, you get drafted to St. John. Did you know anything about St. John at that point? I mean, it was a pretty new team in the in the QMJHL. Um, and you were a young guy. I can't imagine you've done much travel outside of Quebec at that point. But did you know anything about St. John, about the team? No, I mean, it was a city that I've never been to. And uh, obviously, you know, being drafted by them, I was really excited. And uh, I was English community as well, you know. didn't know <laughs> at least a couple of words in English. And that the you know, community was, uh, you know, warm welcome. And my family, you know, taught me. English and uh, I'm really happy that I went there and I think the organization was just the A plus. Now uh, you had a pretty successful rookie campaign. Um, were there any uh, kind of memories or moments that stick out other individual accomplishments or kind of team accomplishments? Obviously it was a pretty stacked team that year um, went all the way to the finals in your first year but any memories of that year that, that stick out in your mind? Yeah I mean I was you know fortunate to, to be playing with really good players and uh, Obviously, you know, uh, right now I'm playing with Mike Hoffman and I had the chance to know that that, that was my captain when I, I was in St. John my first year. And I think, you know, obviously Simone Depre was uh, kind of took me under his wing. And uh, I mean, uh, like I said, it was like all my years uh, we had success. So I think the first year was uh, we, uh, I think Moncton made a lot of trade and got really better. They were older than us and, uh, you know, beat us and that. Uh, in the final, but uh, this this year was just the beginning of our, you know, our success, and then came back stronger. And came back strong, you did. I mean, in, in your second season, obviously the big Memorial Cup uh, win in 2011, and and people didn't expect uh, the Sea Dogs to kind of go that far. Obviously, they knew um, we were supposed to be a good team, but the idea was kind of 2012 was supposed to be the year. Um, you get drafted as well in, in 2011. So you're coming off a Memorial Cup win right into getting drafted third overall in the NHL. That has to rank somewhere near the top of the you know best years of your life, I would have to imagine. Yeah, no, for sure. I think it's uh, – that was the year, you know, I got – I got way – like you said, everything went well. I mean, we won the President Cup, the Memorial Cup, you know. Uh, I mean, you can't ask for more and after you get drafted. So – that year was, uh, like you said, maybe no one really expected it. We were supposed to be a good team, but there was a lot of 17 years old. It's when you're 18 that you, you can have your best year. Everything in one. 
Now, I want to talk a little bit about the NHL draft. We have a ton of guys right now on the Sea Dogs who are, are coming up uh, about to enter their their draft um, in, in June, hopefully. Um, thinking back, was there kind of uh, interviews that, that stuck out in your mind of, of teams you thought? I mean, obviously, you were ranked quite high, so it's easier to look at it and go, okay, one of these four or five, six teams are, are probably going to take me. But were there certain interviews you had or, or teams that you were kind of hopeful or, or thought, you know, hey, I had a really great interview with them. I, I think uh, I'm, I'm going to be picked by them. Yeah, I got fortunate. I mean, when you get to the draft, you kind of, when you're a high pick like that, you, you kind of know where you're going to go. I mean, not where, but you assume you're going to go top five, top six. So, you know, that's what I kind of did. And I went, actually, for me, uh, and, you know, I think uh, I got lucky. I got, I got uh, you know, drafted by them. And uh, I thought, you know, going to the, the draft that day and that night, it was, uh, I was looking forward to it. And I think, you know, I kind of figured that Florida was going to be, but you still never know when you're sitting there and just happy when you hear your name. Yeah, you kind of forget even who the team is that calls you down. <laughs> you're just happy to uh, to get drafted. Uh, so uh, obviously the the big Memorial Cup win in, in 2011, uh, a pretty memorable team. Do you, do you keep in touch with a lot of those guys? I mean, so many of them you played, um, you know, all three years uh, that you were uh, at the top of the Sea Dogs uh, with those guys. That you must keep in touch with a few of them. Yeah, a few of them. I think uh, you know Nathan Bolu. Obviously, you know we, we talk a little bit, and obviously stuff to. Kind of reach out with everybody. Uh, you know, there we That's why it's nice to come back to see. You know, to see uh, to see these guys, and you know, sorry, you chopped up a little there at the end, but we'll uh, we'll move on and do our best. Um, so, uh, obviously you did, you mentioned catching up with these guys and, and you had a lot of chance to, to catch up with them when you were inducted into the, the Sea Dogs Hall of Fame, uh, two years ago. Talk to me about, uh, kind of getting that call and, and getting the notice that, uh, that you were going to be the first ever inductee into this brand new, uh, Sea Dogs Hall of Fame. I didn't hear the question, sir. Oh, no worries. No worries. Uh, just, uh, I, I was talking about kind of uh, players that you played with during that era and how uh, a bunch of them kind of came back to support you when you were inducted into the Sea Dogs Hall of Fame and, uh, and you know, you brought your family down and stuff. So talk to me about kind of getting getting the nod as being the first ever pick into the Hall of Fame and, uh, and, and what that was like. Yeah, it was cool. I mean, it's, you mean, I think, you know, being successful in St. John and, you know, having all the memories, the friends and stuff. And it was an honor for me, you know, to be the first inductee. And obviously just, it was just a great group of guys. Like you said, you know, you're there, you come back, you, you know, how many years later, like eight years. And there's still, you know, still your friends that are there that, that were there in 2010 and, you know, your teammates and they, they come and support you. And we just have a great laugh when, you know, we're there having a beer and just, uh, just bring back memories that uh, we'll never forget. And you had, uh, I mentioned your family came down, you actually rented a bus and brought down what seemed like there was 50 of you there in the in the crowd with all the pictures and stuff. But uh, tell me about that and all the support that they uh, that they gave you. Yeah, it was, uh, no, it was fun. I think we had you know, a lot of people. I thought it was uh, great to have all my family and, and kind of a road trip, you know, it's been a while. I mean, when in junior, you had a lot of road trip and we left, was it, you know, Bring back memories of being on the bus for sure. I want to get into our first uh, audience question here. We we pulled the audience to uh, submit some uh, some questions leading up to this. Um, this question comes from Mully ninety nine. He wants to know who was the best player you ever played against in the queue. Uh, you say who was the best player I ever played? Best with, best or? player you you ever played against in the queue. Uh, oh, that's a good question. In the queue, I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> oh, yeah, Moncton, my first year would be... Uh, 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 yeah, David Savard, the, the defenseman. David Savard, okay. Please. 
That's a tough look picking a wildcat, I must say, as a sea dog would be. <laughs> You're giving them a lot of credit. <laughs> um, I want to move back. Um, I was looking through in preparation for the show. I was looking at a lot of your uh, your league records and franchise records. Uh, you still currently hold four league records. One of those is your uh, your shootout um, percentage and success rate in a given season. You have three seasons that are all tied for number one all time in shootout uh, percentage. You went six for six in 09-10, uh, you went three for three in 11-12, and two for two in 12-13. So you were uh, perfect across those three seasons. And you hold the record for most shootout goals in a career in the queue with 16. And then lifetime in the queue, which is just a ridiculous stat, you're 16 for 18 all time. And it ranks it by percentage when you look at the uh, the, the rankings for shootouts. And you're second to Alexander Radulov all time in the queue. But he it went he went four for four, so it's only four shots, uh, and he had four goals. But you went sixteen for eighteen. Can you talk to me a little bit about a, being a, a shootout specialist? And uh, is that something obviously everyone practices the the shootout? Those are the glamour the glamour moments for a player. But just talk to me about kind of your shootout mentality, um, things you practice, things you look for, you know, study goalies, things like that. Yeah, you never really practice. Yeah, we never really practice, but I feel like the, you know, I think when you get one on one, I mean, the queue, it's funny you're telling me these tests because I, I had no idea. And <laughs> I mean, I had a go to move every time I was doing the same thing. And in the queue, there's no video, you know, the goal is not what. Wait a second. Until he when you, back yeah, sorry. Yeah, go for sorry it. about my connection. It's, it's all good. It's, it's all not good. great. I don't know what's going on. But. <laughs> you were saying you don't have video on goalies and things like that. Talk about, yeah, no, the, there's no video. Uh, there's no video in the in the queue, and I think when you get to the NHL, it gets harder because the the goalie kind of knows that you move, so it gets harder to. to And then uh, going into your other uh, records here, I was just taking a quick look at um, your, your franchise records. So you currently still hold 21 franchise regular season records with the Sea Dogs. Uh, most points in a career, most points in a season, most hat tricks, uh, most assists. And then there's 36 franchise playoff records that includes uh, most goals in a playoffs, both um, over your career and in a single season. Um, just talk to me about some of those accomplishments. I mean, uh, I know obviously some of them are, are pretty unique where it's like most assists by a rookie in his third playoff game or something, something kind of ridiculous like that. But um, talk to me about some of those records. Are there any that kind of stick out? Or are there certain ones you were chasing that you were kind of counting down the, the, the points to? Yeah, I mean, not really. I think... Like you said, I mean, you're telling me that right now, and I, <laughs> I had no idea that, that all these records and stuff, and it's pretty cool. I mean, you know, obviously to to have that and probably my my funniest funniest year, you know, in in my hockey career. I mean, it's so fun to be junior. All the guys are the same age, and you know, we had so much fun. And I think the success I got to give it to my teammates too. I mean, you know, help me so much and we had a good team playing with Zach Phillips along the way, Danny Gauthier was my, you know, the guy I lived with. And I want to get into, um, yeah, no, uh, I want to get into uh, your, your first season in the NHL. You started, uh, you attended preseason, your second preseason with the Panthers um, and then you were sent back uh, to the Sea Dogs, and it wasn't the greatest Sea Dogs team. It was kind of depleted after a couple uh, deep runs over the past uh, three years. So you were kind of, uh, you still led the team. I think you finished the season, even though you played only half the season, you finished number one in points that season on the team. So that just goes to show you we were in a bit of a rebuild that year. But uh, um, you you joined the Panthers um, after, uh, it was a shortened season, so the season didn't start until January. 
Um, did you have a kind of a hope or a, a, a wish that obviously, you know, you got sent home and then you see that the season's getting shortened and you're having a pretty successful um, season in the queue? Was there, was there hopes that you'd get called up uh, once when things got back in motion? Uh, yeah, no, for sure. I was, uh, you know, excited, like you said. I mean, obviously, you know, I wasn't used to the team that that we had at the time, you know, that we were supposed to win 50 plus wins and now we had a rebuild team. And I think I was working out, you know, I kind of knew the luck I was going to end. And after World Junior. And obviously, you know, I got the I, I won the rookie of the year that year, so I had a really good season, and I kind of entered my you know I I kind of had an advantage because I, I started playing, and the older guys didn't really skate, so when I got in, I was more. <laughs> That's funny. Skating's half the battle, right? And you talked about winning the the Calder uh, Trophy that year for rookie of the year. Um, you actually tied in points with Nail Yakupov uh, at the end of the season. How closely were you following that race? Like after every game, I mean, the Oilers would be playing the late night games, but were, were you following that pretty closely? I mean, obviously, it's determined by more than than just point standings for rookies, unless it's you know by a wide margin. But you're, it's pretty rare that you're tied with a guy at the end of the season. Was that something you followed pretty closely? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, obviously, we had a tough year that year as a team. So I mean. I But, uh, yeah, I think, I mean, I remember, I think the last, like, I think he had, like, a hat trick, like, the, like, second last game or something. And I think I was ahead. I was, like, oh, no, like, he's trying to catch me. And I'm thinking, we, like, he's. Yeah, I was trying to, I was trying to find that you know, stat game by game at the end of the season. If it came right down to the last game, it was, like, one of you caught up. But that's, uh, that's funny. He had the hat trick. Now I, yeah, you I have probably to probably tell me that that's that's because you know every <laughs> <laughs> Hey, the Q side, I'll have to thank uh, Denny Demir from the league. He he keeps the the stats unlocked for us. So thank you to Denny for that. Um, I'm a I'm a huge Pittsburgh Penguins fan um, from the '90s. Um, love those sort of back to back cups. Big Mario Lemieux fan. I got to ask about playing with uh, with Yarmir Yager. That must have been kind of a a childhood dream come true a, a little bit. Yeah, I mean, especially at his age, you know, he was 44, 43, I think, at the time, and played till, say, 45 with me. I mean, it's, it's impressive what he could do at this age and how strong he was. And he taught me and Barca, you know, so many things and, you know, gave us confidence. And that was so fun playing with him. We, we just had fun and, you know, we, we had success. Now, um, I just want to dip back. That was a personal question, so I want to get back to the actual questions. Uh, your third season in the league with the with the Panthers, um, Gerard Gallant and Mike Kelly joined the the coaching staff. Obviously, you knew them quite well from your uh, from your time uh, with the Sea Dogs. Can you talk a little bit about that uh, reunion and maybe what was different? Um, obviously, it's the NHL versus versus juniors, but what was different about that you saw and kind of their coaching and uh, obviously you as a player as well is going to be massively different in the, after three years in the NHL. But just talk about that kind of reunion between the, the three of you. I missed that, but you're talking about uh, Gerard? Yeah, just a reunion between you okay. and, and, and Gerard and Mike. Yeah, no, it was uh, it was fun. I mean, obviously, it's the best coach I've ever had, and with Mike and the success we had in Saint. Zay. And and then when he got to, and I heard he was going to be the coach of the Panthers, I was really excited. Obviously, it didn't end the way we would have liked, but uh, obviously, when we was there, uh, every player likes him, and it's like you know, you want to play for a coach. Now, in your most recent season with the Panthers, you had the honor of being named the uh, the NHL All Star Game, and you took part in the uh, accuracy shooting competition, which I can imagine is probably one of the more stressful competitions they could put you in. How does that How does that work when you get to the All Star Game? Do you kind of put your name in, like, "Hey, I want to do these things"? Is the team picking them? Does the NHL just tell you, "No, you're going to be doing this," or do they kind of play to your strength? How do, How does that work? No, it's the uh, it's the NHL that that decides, or 
I didn't pick what I was doing, so I had no <laughs> idea till then. I knew I wasn't doing the fastest skating, so that's what, that's what I knew. But no accuracy. I mean, uh, I thought they were going to have the pass again, and I was going to do that, but they, they kind of took it off and added a thing from the stand, so oh, I did the accuracy. But that was just fun. I mean, guys are there having fun. Obviously, you want to win, you get you know money for for foundation, so it's uh, it's fun. But I uh, said so I did. You know, I didn't do that bad. I think I finished third, so. Yeah, I think he had a, a 10.2 and the winner had like a 9.5 or something when I, I watched it today. So it was good. It was good. Uh, now, um, your current NHL career obviously is on hold as the, as the NHL has kind of uh, suspended their play. Um, but it was announced uh, that beginning uh, April 30th, um, just coming up this week, you'll be taking part in a head-to-head -head series on NHL 20. Um, and you'll be representing the Florida Panthers, uh, taking on guys like Evgeny Kuznetsov, uh, Charlie McAvoy with the Bruins, Brady Kachuk. Uh, how are your how are your gaming skills? How would you rank yourself in uh, in NHL twenty? Playing now, I'm playing a little bit more because uh, you know we kind of have to stay at home. So, but usually I don't play that much. But now I'm I'm getting better, and uh, but I can see there's a lot of really good players <laughs> in that game. So, <laughs> I mean, obviously I'm I'm okay, and it's just gonna be fun, you know, playing against other guys. And, uh, you know, it's going to be funny. I think we're going to have the, you know, a camera on us. And, you know, they've been doing a little, a little bit of them. Nice. We saw OV playing Gretzky. So that that's a lot of fun. And they're just trying to do, not kind of <laughs> do some stuff on the internet while they're, they're yeah. doing hockey. Now, have you played against anyone that's going to be in the tournament uh, before? Or do you guys have like kind of a, an NHL group that you, uh, that you match up against? No, I usually, I mean, I play with my buddies and that's about it. I play more Call of Duty with the guys that plays in, in my <laughs> team in Florida, but not that much NHL. I know for Toronto, my team is uh, is a good one. I want to get into our second uh, fan question that was submitted. Uh, it's a good one. He says, if you could have one present, past, or future Sea Dog on the Panthers right now, who would it be? Are you playing with right now? You mean? Uh, yeah. So he, they played either. You know, you played with them on the Sea Dogs, or they played before, or they played after with the Sea Dogs. If you get anyone from all-time Sea Dogs franchise on the Panthers right now, who would it be? Obviously. He's already there, so I don't have to pick uh, pick him. But uh, it cut out. But I, I assume you it. said Mike Hoffman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I said uh, no, but I said he's already there, so I'll pick another guy. Oh, okay, okay. We can bring him. Uh, probably be maybe add some some. Uh, let's see. I mean, I gotta go with Zach Phillips. I mean, I play with him a lot. You know, on on the same lines. Obviously, there's a lot of good players that went through, but him uh, it was special to me when uh, when we played together. Nice. Uh, I do want to uh, ask the, the third question. This was something I kind of wanted to, uh, to ask as well, just because it kind of came out in the last uh, two or three days as people are sitting bored at home and they're coming up with all sorts of uh, fantasy lists and greatest all times. And this one is the uh, Olympic uh, projection list for 2022. So what are your thoughts on being projected to be on the first line uh, of the Olympics representing Team Canada in 2022? Yeah, I know. I saw that there was... Uh... Pretty flattering. I mean, being obviously with McDavid, I think, and McKinnon uh, on the first line. I don't know if I could catch them, so I think uh, <laughs> they'd be too <laughs> too fast for me. But no, I mean, it's uh, obviously I've been having you know a couple past seasons been. I got better every year, and uh, I think it's uh, no, it's fun. Obviously. Team Canada would be my, my dream, you know, to, to compete in the Olympics. So hopefully I can, you know, stay like this and uh, play well. And uh, like, well, yeah, we, sorry. No, no, no worries. Uh, we hope to see you there in uh, 2022. Now I do have um, the lightning rounds all lined up. This does uh, 
This does depend on uh, the quickness that you answer, so the, the chopping it in and out of the video, we'll, we'll play with that a little bit, but uh, hopefully we can get some, some quick answers. Uh, but before we get to the lightning round, I want to give you the honor of, uh, of announcing our guests for next week's episode of Monday Night Mike. So Jonathan, who do we have uh, next week for episode four? Next episode, we're going to have number nine. Used to play for St. John, uh, Joe Oh, the suspension is killing me. It cut out of the perfect time. <laughs> he was about to say Joe Valeno. It cut out right as you said V, <laughs> so no one knew. No, no, people figured it out. Number nine, Joe Valeno will be joining us fresh off a gold medal uh, performance at the World Juniors with Team Canada. Going to talk about his first year in the AHL as well as his time with the Sea Dogs. So join us uh, next Monday, uh, same time, 7.30 p.m. Atlantic for that interview. Jonathan, it was a little... Uh, a little uh, difficult at times. Uh, we'll blame the Wi-Fi on this one. We'll take a rain check and we'll get you back in, in full HD uh, later on this summer, hopefully. But I do want to get into the lightning round. Uh, so it's 10 questions. I want you to answer them as honestly as possible. Um, if uh, you do need to pass, I totally respect that. Um, I'll, I'll chirp you a little bit, but I will, you, I will allow a single pass uh, for one of these questions. Are you ready for the lightning round? All right, let's go. Uh, number one, you scored your first NHL. You scored in your first NHL game. It was your second shift. It was your first shot ever in the NHL. Do you remember who the goalie was that you scored on? Cam Ward. Cam Ward, lightning fast. I love that. Number two, who was the unsung hero on that 2011 Memorial Cup winning team? Uh, Alex Beauregard. Alex Beauregard. Okay. Again, lightning fast. I love it. Uh, number three, it's a would you rather. Would you rather get a hat trick or a hole in one? I know you're a big golfer. Hat trick. I don't have one yet. Like in <laughs> seven years, I can't wait. I get so many two goal games. Like, oh, I feel I feel bad now. I looked at all those stats and I didn't. Uh, that wasn't meant to be like a chirp that you don't have one yet or anything. <laughs> I just had to find the equivalent of a hole in one. It's coming. It's coming. Do you have a hole in one? I got one. Yeah. You should have got one during the the. What was it the the three tournament that we did here at, at Rockwood? You could have won a, a car or a ten grand. <laughs> uh, number four. So on uh, Elite Prospects um, website, where you can track uh, hockey players and prospects, and it gives you all the stats about their career and stuff. Sometimes there's a little blurb on the bottom from a scout or or someone who's written something about a player. So I'm going to read you a write-up about one of the players on the Florida Panthers, and you have to tell me who it is. Who, who am I talking about? Okay. This was from uh, Matthias Strozik, was the guy who wrote this. I have no idea who that is. And this was written in 2012. A creative forward with excellent hands, offensively fantastic with great scoring and playmaking skills, a hard worker who is very good with the puck, but still needs to improve his play without it. I and stop at the hard worker. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, a hard worker who's very good with the puck, but he still needs to improve his play without it. So what, what do I need to say? The uh, it, this is this is a write up on Elite Prospects about one of the players on the Florida Panthers. So you have to guess who it is. I'm so sorry. You keep <laughs> no, no worries. It's a write up about one of your teammates, or sorry, one person okay, on the Panthers. In Florida? Yeah, it's or, one, uh, one person Panthers? on the roster. Who was I talking about? Like right now? Yeah. Mike Hoffman? Mike Hoffman is incorrect. Uh, I was actually talking about you. It was a tri trick question. <laughs> uh, that's it. I, I kind of figured it was me. But... <laughs> Okay. I thought you'd. I thought you that know at the end. That was it's good. A, <laughs> I didn't want you to throw one of your teammates too far under the bus after it said uh, they're they're good with the puck, but they need to improve their skill without it. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you said Hoffman. Uh, number five. Uh, you're a Florida guy now. Live in Florida um, during the season. Um, in the NFL, do you cheer for the Miami Dolphins, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, or the Jacksonville Jaguars? Uh, I gotta go with the Fins. I mean, uh, it's right there. It's right close to it's me. Right and I try to go a couple of games when when I go, but now uh, they got two other quarterbacks, so it should be. Uh, you know, I I don't know if he's gonna play this year, but uh, it's gonna be interesting with the, all the moves they did too. They did a lot of moves, so I'm sure. 
Uh, I won't make you try and pronounce his last name because I can't do it either. So. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Tegel, Tegel, Tegel or something. <laughs> Uh, someone will write in, I'm sure. Uh, number six, and we are looking for uh, for honesty on this one. Number six, uh, most consecutive days you've gone without a shower during this quarantine. Um, a day and a half. Day and a half. <laughs> day and a half. <laughs> we'll round that up to two days because we know you're not being honest. <laughs> All right, seven. This is probably my favorite one out of the whole round here. Uh, Mike. Mike Kelly, Mike Kelly versus Gerard Gallant in an arm wrestling match. Who wins? Uh, I got to go with Turk. I mean, he's, I think he's stronger than Mike, Ooh. obviously. So uh, I think, uh, yeah, he was tough when he played. So, I mean, I don't know about Mike when he plays. He, he was tough, but I mean, Turk, you, you got to give him the, the, the arm wrestle. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, number Eight. Would you rather miss a wide open net or take a dumb penalty? Uh, take a dumb penalty, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I won't show that to uh, Joel Quinn. Uh, yeah, number, <laughs> number nine. Uh, you've probably been having a lot of Zoom chats and the interaction with your teammates here during the during the quarantine. Who has the worst quarantine hair on the Panthers right now? Can you say it again? Yeah. Uh, who has the worst quarantine hair on the Panthers right now? Worst quarantine hair? I haven't seen it everywhere, but... Uh, I'd say Mark Pissick probably. Uh, even no quarantine, he has a worse haircut, so it doesn't matter if you're in the quarantine. Shots fired, okay. And you've recently got the quarantine buzz cut, but I won't make you take off your hat. I saw it before. It looks good. It looks good. It looks fun. Uh, number 10. Here we go. This is probably the toughest one here. This is tough. You get 10 pucks and 10 shots. 10 shots total in a shootout, and we've established you're a shootout specialist. Against prime Roberto Luongo. How many goals are you scoring? Against uh, prime Roberto Luongo, you say? Yeah, how many, how many goals are you scoring out of 10 shootout tries, breakaways on Roberto Luongo? If I score 4 out of 10. 4 out of 10. You were 16 out of 18 in the queue. You think you can only get... He's a queue goalie, too. I mean... Yeah, but in the NHL, uh, my my stats went down, so it's, uh, <laughs> not as much confidence there. When not I was, as much uh, confidence. Junior. And as a teammate too, he's probably got a, a couple of the, the inside track on you as well. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> John, I I thank you so much for uh, for sticking through with this. And again, uh, to anyone watching, we apologize. We'll get you back in uh, in full HD glory um, soon enough. But um, is there anything else you wanted to let us know about, things you have coming up, uh, charitable efforts, anything that we should know about you want to share and, uh, and let the people know? No, I mean, obviously, just want to apologize for my connection. <laughs> it's been uh, terrible. Hopefully, the, the summer we can chat again, and I'll make sure I have the best connection in, uh, in Montreal. But, uh, no, I just want to say, really, thanks for, for having me and uh, that, uh, you know, St. John has a special you know, place in my heart. And uh, that's about it. I mean, hopefully we can play again and I can play in front of you guys that, you know, supported me uh, when I was in St. John. And, uh, yeah, just uh, see you again. Hopefully, you know, I think we can uh, – usually I try to go in St. John uh, every summer. But it'll... And see you guys. So uh, appreciate uh, the time and uh, it, was, uh, it was fun. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for uh, sharing your time with us, Jonathan. We hope you and your uh, family are staying uh, safe uh, during all of this, and we wish you uh, the best of luck in the upcoming uh, either uh, continuation of the, uh, the, the season or uh, a brand new season uh, next year.
Uh, guys, that's going to do it for our interview with Jonathan Huberto tonight. Um, remember that Joe Valeno is going to be joining us next Monday, 7.30 Atlantic, right here on Facebook Live. You can get your questions in on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. And this video will be going up on YouTube as well, just following the show. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in, and we will see you next week.